The gunpowder plot would have changed history forever. It would have resulted in a huge hole being blown in London, with half of the English capital being damaged, and the king, queen and the whole of the monarchy, along with the government, falling too. Guy Fawkes is remembered for being the most famous gunpowder plotter, or man that wanted to bring about the death of King James I, and Robert Catesby may have been considered the mastermind. But one man who was executed in a brutal way for his involvement, being hanged, drawn and quartered in front of a huge crowd in London, was Everard Digby, a man who was a leading member of the plot. He was a Catholic who had been involved early on in the brutal plot, but what is the story of his execution? Join us today as we look at the execution of the forgotten gunpowder plotter, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Sir Everard Digby was from the Rutland and Leicestershire area, and his ancestors had been involved in the tribulations of the monarchy for centuries. After his ancestors fought for Henry VII during the Battle of Bosworth Field, the deciding battle of the Wars of the Roses. Everard Digby was given a very good upbringing and childhood, but he was a Catholic man, and he was present at court during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, and he became a well-thought-of and respected member of the Queen's court. But through his marriage he expanded his businesses and lands, and he added a significant amount of property, but he would in April 1603, shortly after Elizabeth I's death, be knighted by King James I, the target of the gunpowder plot, at Beaver Castle. He would then days later attend the funeral of Elizabeth I, but within a few years, he had been recruited to become part of the gunpowder plot. Digby and his wife and friends met with Robert Catesby, and he swore an oath of secrecy into what later became the huge conspiracy to bring down the monarchy. English Catholics wanted to end the persecution that they had suffered during the reign of Elizabeth I, and they hoped this would come to an end during James I's reign. But this did not happen, and further disagreements and persecution resulted in a plot being devised to kill James and blow up Parliament, along with his royal family and government. Many lost the faith they had in James, and the gunpowder plot grew, and Everard Digby, along with Catesby, was considered rather senior in this. It's believed that he may have been shocked at the huge plan or regicide, and that Digby was asked to get involved in renting Cofton Court to ensure that the conspirators could kidnap Princess Elizabeth, who they then planned on making Queen after the King's death. He continued to provide financial assistance to the plot, and promised large amounts of money, but then he was asked to prepare for a hunting party. The plan was to gather a group of other conspirators, who would then spread mutiny and rebellion in the Midlands and rise up. Digby was involved in rousing this, and he also promised more money to pay for the rent for the conspirators' houses and properties they had rented in Westminster. But Digby would spend time with the other conspirators, and would attend dinners and have mass with them. On the 4th of November, hours before the gunpowder plot was to go ahead, Guy Fawkes would be found sitting on the gunpowder that had been stored in the undercrofts of the Houses of Lords, and he was then arrested. After hearing of this, many of the conspirators fled and headed for the Midlands to prepare for the uprising, and they would then meet Digby and his group. Catesby informed Digby that the King was dead, and he was convinced, but he knew they were in too deep with the conspiracy. Digby and the conspirators would then raid Warwick Castle, and they would steal horses and then collect weapons before they went through the Midlands. The support for the uprising grew, and they gathered more supplies, and they then arrived at Holbeach House, near to Staffordshire, and they then tried to dry out some of the gunpowder they had, but a spark from a fire ignited it, and Catesby, Rookwood and Grant were engulfed in flames. But eventually there would be a shootout at the house, and Everard Digby who had already made arrangements to give himself up, in a nearby woods where he was hiding out. He was then taken to the Tower of London, and his houses were ransacked and his belongings were searched, and they found a significant amount of gold and money. Digby tried to meet with the King to explain his actions and ideas, and whilst imprisoned inside the Tower of London, he wrote a number of secret letters that were smuggled out of the Tower for him. But he would not be tortured there like Guy Fawkes was, as it would be Fawkes who would crumble and explain everything, and it would also implicate the other conspirators. Digby was not racked and was not subjected to little ease or torture, and his imprisonment was paid for by some of the money taken from his belongings. He would refuse to cooperate with interrogators when he was asked questions, and he would carve in the wall of his cell an inscription. 
But on the 27th of January 1606, Digby, along with seven of the surviving co-conspirators, were taken to Westminster Hall and were brought to trial. The king and his family spectated the proceedings in secret, and Digby was the only one who said he was guilty, and he was tried separately for this. He wore a black satin suit and gave a short speech which was moving, and he defended his actions and accused the king of going back on the promises for Catholics, and he was worried about harsh treatment. But he also asked for clemency, and asked to be beheaded rather than hanged, drawn and quartered. This was considered a more straightforward and easier execution, but this would not be adhered to. Digby was ridiculed for his calls for leniency, and he was found guilty along with the other plotters. As he was taken from the hall, he shouted, If I may but hear any of your lordships say you forgive me, I shall go more cheerfully to the gallows. He would spend his final days inside of the Tower of London in his cell, writing letters to his wife and children, and he would also write poetry. On the 30th of January, Everard Digby was taken for his execution. Thousands of spectators lined the streets of London, and at the Tower, he was strapped to a hurdle with Robert Winter and John Grant, and he was taken to the western end of old St Paul's churchyard. Thomas Bates was also taken there, and armed guards protected the route to protect from a rescue attempt, but the families of the condemned would witness what was happening. Everard Digby would be the first of the four men to be executed, and he was very cold when he got to the scaffold. He climbed up and spoke to the executioner and the audience, and he said he may have broken the law, but in the eyes of his conscience and religion, he had committed no such crime. He asked for the forgiveness of God, and for the forgiveness of the people that were there that day, and he claimed innocence for a number of Jesuits who were linked to the gunpowder plot. He refused a Protestant priest who had been appointed, and then he said his goodbye to his fellow plotters. All of his clothes were taken off except his shirt, and he murmured, O oh Jesus, Jesus save me and keep me. And he climbed the ladder, and was hanged for a short while, until he was almost dead. The executioner then cut him down, and he fell on the scaffold severely, hitting his head which caused a wound. He was then taken to the block, bloody, and was castrated and disemboweled, with these parts then being burned on a fire in front of him. Following this, Everard Digby's head was then taken clean off, and he was then quartered, and his remains were sent to four corners of England. The next day the other conspirators, including Guy Fawkes, were executed. Sir Everard Digby is remembered today as one of the forgotten gunpowder plotters, but he was very influential, and he had a very prominent role in the plot, especially when it came to financing it. He was a man who would pay the ultimate price for his involvement in trying to blow up the king, and he would then be hanged, drawn and quartered in front of a huge crowd. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.